What's going on guys, John Elder here from Codemy.com and in this video, we're gonna to start to stylize our blog app with Django and Python. Okay guys, like I said, in this video, we're gonna to start to make this look a little bit nicer than it already is. And I think we'll add another field to our database model if we have time. But before we get started, if you like this video, want to see more like it, be sure to smash the like button below, subscribe to the channel, give me a thumbs up for the YouTube algorithm, which really helps the channel out and I really appreciate it. And be sure to check out Codemy.com where I have dozens of courses with hundreds of videos to teach you code. Use coupon code YouTube1 to get $30 off membership. That's all my courses, videos, and books for one time fee at just $49, which is insanely cheap. So it is Monday morning here in Vegas and it's time to make this blog look a little nicer. We have absolutely no styling whatsoever. But before we get started, I just want to mention we passed 10,000 subscribers on the YouTube channel over the weekend. Woo! Very awesome. Thank you guys so much for subscribing. Uh, means a lot and it's uh, really, really cool. So, all right. In the future, I think we're going to use a professional template to make our blog look good. But that's going to be later on after we finish creating the whole thing. Now, I just want to use a basic bootstrap framework um, template that we can use that's super easy cheap, free, cheap, completely free. And if you've watched any of my Django videos in the past, we always use Bootstrap. Um, it's just super popular and it's really easy to use and you know, free. So that's what we're gonna use and that's what we're gonna set up in this video. So head over to getbootstrap.com. And this is the Bootstrap website. Like I said, this is free. We're on version 4.4. .4. You can toggle back to different versions if you want. Just use whatever the latest version is, you should be okay. So click on the documentation and then scroll down here and we have this starter template. So all we have to do is copy and paste this into our app and it will start working. So that's what we're gonna do. But before we do that, I wanna talk about uh, breaking these pages up. So if you watched any of my other Django videos, you've seen me create a base.html file and then extend that base file into every other file on our app. And that's a way to break your pages apart and put things that are gonna be the same on every page into one file and then just reference that one file every time you create a new web page. So that's what we're gonna do now. So let's head over to our code and in our templates direct directory, right click and create a new file. And let's just go file, save as, and let's call this base.html. And now we can just, having gone over to our, our bootstrap here, click this copy thing to copy all this code here, and then just right click and paste this in and that's pretty much it. So now we need to come down here to this H1 tag, and this is where we're gonna put all of the content from every one of our pages of our blog right here. So to do that, we just create some embedded Django here, or embedded Python, I guess you could call it. And we wanna say, we wanna say block content. And then below this, we wanna end block, right? So what this means is right here, we're gonna output everything from any one of our pages of our website right here. So that means this stuff and this stuff will be on every page of our website, right? So, okay, almost done. Now we need to use the same block of code here on every one of our actual web pages. So go to our templates directory, click on our home HTML, and we want this to go right here. So let's copy this and paste. So everything between these two tags, like right here, will be kind of sucked out of this file and then put right here, right here, in this file, right? So that's how that works. So save this, order our home.html, and we also have to tell this file to do that. So up here at the top, we just extends and then base.html, right? So if we save this, head back over to our app here, and hit reload. Now, before I do that, take a look at this text. Look at the format, look at the color, look at the font. Now when I hit reload, boom, it all changes. These texts are now blue, or these links are now blue. It's skinnier font. Everything looks slightly different. Well, that means Bootstrap has been properly installed. So, okay, that was pretty easy. Now this is all smooshed up against the corner here. I wanna move this over, so let's go back to our base HTML file and really quickly just wrap this guy in a div. So we want div with a class equals container. And now this is just a bootstrap class that kind of indents everything a little bit as you'll see here. 
So if we save this and come back here and hit reload, boom, it pops it over a little bit. We might want to push it down a little bit too. So you could do that with CSS or, you know, we could just put a line break in there. Save this, head back, reload, boom, pops it down a little bit. Okay, so now when we click on one of these, uh oh, this page hasn't been bootstrapified yet. So let's do that real quick. Let's head back over to our home.html and I'm just going to copy this right here. And now we can go to our base, no, to our article details.html and just paste that in and then go back to home and let's grab this closing block tag and paste it in down here. And that's all there is to it. So now if we save this, come back here and hit reload, boom, it smooshes everything over. It looks fancier now, right? That horizontal rule line looks better. It looks sleeker, you know? This back thing is uh, is looking good and very cool. Now, we can use anything from Bootstrap we want. So if we go over to Bootstrap and let's click on Components and let's look at buttons. Say we want a button. I, want, I like this secondary button. All we have to do is create a class of BTN, BTN secondary. And now we'll have a button. So we can go back to our back link right here right, which is this guy, say we want to turn that into a button, all we have to do is give this a class of BTN, BTN secondary, which I just copied straight from bootstrap just now. If we do that, boom, now it's a button. And it works. Very cool, right? This is the beauty of bootstrap, we can just do things like that. So okay, we're starting to get somewhere we've got bootstrap installed, and it's looking pretty good. Now let's create a nav bar at the top here so we can have some basic navigation. So come back to getbootstrap.com, click on components, and then let's go down to nav bar. And I'm just gonna grab the first one I see, which is this guy right here. We probably don't want this search bar thing, but we could take that out. So I'm just gonna copy this. Now let's head back over to our base.html file, and we could just paste this in wherever we want it. Now let's say we want it right under the body tag. So it's the very first thing on the on the page. So I just paste that in control V to paste or you can right click and click paste. And let's go ahead and just save this and see what this is now. So head back to our app and hit reload and boom, we've got this nav bar at the top. So very, very cool. Now I don't really like this light gray, I, I like a darker color. So I'm going to change this, let's go up to the top of our nav car nav bar code right here. And let's see the very first line nav bar light, I'm just going to change that to nav bar dark. And then right here again, BG light, change that to BG dark. So if we save this, come back here and hit reload, boom, now it's dark. Very cool. So and also, it kind of, you know, goes with this button too, the, the same color. So notice on any page we go to, we have this nav bar at the top. Why? Because we put the nav bar code in our base.html file and whatever we put in our base.html file ends up on every page of our site now since we've you know done it that way. So all right, let's look at the nav bar here and let's change this around a little bit. Instead of nav bar right here, which is just this thing right here, let's change that to uh, my freaking awesome blog. <laughs> all right, so let's save that and let's change this link to a Django link. So we can go URL and then just call home. Why home? Because in our URLs.py file, we named our home view or our home URL as home right there. So we can just reference that there. And that'll work. So come back here and hit reload. Boom, my freaking awesome blog. If we click on it, boom, it goes home. Okay, that's working. Uh, now let's get rid of this uh, search thing. I don't think we're really going to need that. We can always add it back if we want to later. But for now, let's just go ahead and get rid of it. And well, let's just leave it there. Why not? Well, now let's get rid of it. <laughs> so let's come down here to our nav bar code on our uh, base.html. And I'm just looking for a search right here. So here I click on this form. And this closing form tag right here highlights. So that's how I know I can just delete all of that. So if we save this and come back here and hit reload, boom, now that's gone. Uh, let's get rid of this disabled link. We don't need that. That's right here. Again, I click on the li, the closing li tag highlights, so I know what to delete. Boom, that's gone. Now we got this drop down box. Eh, we don't need that for now. Let's go ahead and get rid of that too. So again, here it says drop down. So I just go up to the li 
And there's the closing LI down here. So I know to delete all of this, save it, reload, that's gone. And let's get rid of this home link too. I don't really want that. So come up, there's home. And let's see, there's LI, there's the closing LI. Boom. Now we'll we'll keep this link here because we're going to want to put some sort of link there in the future. So we'll just keep that there for now. But now we can come back here and reload. And okay, so we're looking pretty good here. My freaking awesome blog. We got some basic navigation, we can toggle back and forth. We got a button here that now works, it's completely functional. And okay, now that was very quick and very easy. And we're starting to get somewhere. This is looking pretty good. Now, again, I understand this is a very basic template. This is a very basic looking blog, but it still looks decent. It still looks professional. Like I said, in the future, we'll probably use a real blog template with it, you know, better graphics and stuff. But for now, this this works perfectly fine. So, okay, what else do we want to do? How are we doing on time? Oh, lots of time. Now, check this out. Up here, it says Hello World in the tab of the browser button. If we click back, it says Hello World again. That's because on our base.html in our title tag, that's what we put, hello world. But instead of that, I wanna put my freaking awesome blog, right? And now that's fine for our homepage. And you can see if I hit reload, now it says my freaking awesome blog up here. If I hover over it, a little box pops up. And that's fine, that's what we want on our homepage. But check out if we click on one of the blog posts, it still says my freaking awesome blog at the top here. And we probably don't want that. We might want the blog title itself or something else completely that we designate ourselves. How can we do that? Well, there's a couple of things. We can use a, uh, a tag just like the tag we used right here. But instead of block content, it will be block title. And we just put that right here in our title field on our base.html file. So I'm just gonna copy this right from right here. And let's come up here and paste it. But instead of block content, we're gonna say block title. Now this is just a keyword, you can call it anything you want. You can call it my freaking awesome title if you wanted to, but title is the convention. And now after here, we put an end block, right? Anytime you have one of these tags, block tags, you need to end block, right? Okay, and if we wanted to kind of put this on separate lines to make it easier to read, we could do that, right? There we go. Okay, so that's good, but then on our, say, article detail page, we can come up here to right up at the top here, and we can, well, let's just grab this. And instead of content, it's gonna be title. It's gonna be the same thing that we, uh, an in block, the same name that you used here is gonna be the same name from here, right? And now inside of here, we can put anything we want. This is, this is a blog post, dot, 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 right? So if we save this, just to make sure this worked, and we hit reload, now it says this is a blog post here. If we go back, it still says my freaking awesome blog. So what happens is, notice on the base.html, we put my freaking awesome blog. This will be the default title unless we specify otherwise, right? On article details, we specified otherwise. We said, no, no, put this as a blog post, right? On our homepage, right, we didn't put anything at all. So since we didn't put anything at all, it's gonna use whatever this is there, right? So that's how that works. Now, okay, we're almost there, but this thing, this page, this article details is only a template, right? So if we click my second blog post, it still says this is a blog post. If we click my first blog post, this is a blog post, right? We may want this to change depending on what the file called, or depending on the blog post itself, right? So we can do this a number of ways. How are we doing on time? Okay, still doing good on time. So we could just go back, for instance, to our article detail page, and here's the post title, right? We could just put that right here, right? That's unique, or that will be unique for every page. Now if we hit reload, it says post the first up here, which is post the first. If we go back and click on my second post, 
it says my second post up here, which is the title here, right? So that's better. That's definitely better. But you may want to still specify exactly what goes in there. So how do we do that? Well, we need to use the database for that. And we can. So let's add a field to our database. Let's head back over to, let's see, models.py. And here we have title, author, and body, right? Let's create another one. Let's just copy our title one. And let's just call this title underscore tag, maybe. This is going to be the title tag that goes in our HTML. And it'll be models car field. And let's just say max link 255. And again, this is a lowercase l. Don't forget that. Uh, uppercase l looks like that. Right? Slightly different. It's angular where this is kind of curved. I don't know why Sublime does that. Drives me crazy. But anyway, okay, so now we've got this title tag. But if we just go back to our admin area and then log in, hope you remember your login and password and click on the posts here, we get an error. Why is that? Well, we've added something to our model, but now we have to make a migration and push that into the database itself, right? Anytime you make a change to your model, you need to do that. So we need to add one more thing here, right? Since this is a, a model that's already been created and already has a couple of blog posts, we need to say what the default will that this will be if we don't specify it. So let's go default equals, and I'm just going to come back over here to whatever our, our base was, and I'm just going to say my freaking awesome blog. Right? Uh, you can put anything you want in there, right? You could just put title if you want, but I'm going to save it like that. Okay, so that should work. Now we can head back over to our terminal, control C to break out of our server if you haven't already. Um, hold it, hold the control button and the C button down at the same time. Uh, now we can type in ls to make sure we're in the right place. There's our manage.py file. Our virtual environment is turned on, so everything's ready to go. So now we just type in python manage.py make migrations. And boom, it's created a little migration. Now we go python manage.py migrate. And this is always the, the steps you're going to go through whenever you make a change to your database. Okay, so now we can python manage.py run server to run our server again. Okay, and let's head back over here and now hit reload and boom, it worked again. But if we click here, we can see there's a title tag and it says my freaking awesome blog right there, uh, which is cool. So instead of that, I'm going to say this is the title tag for my second post. Right, so let's save this. Now let's do the same thing for our first one. And up for our title tag here, I'm gonna say title tag one, right? Just to make it a little different, save that. Okay, now we need to make sure that this title tag uh, is gonna show up on our web pages. So let's head back over to our article details. And up here where we said post title in our block title thing, we just need to change this to title tag and save that. And why title tag? Well, because in our models.py, that's what we named it right there. So, okay, save everything, head back over to our actual web page. And at the top of our main post page, it says my freaking awesome blog. If we click post the first, it says title tag one, right? Which is different than post the first title. If we go back and click my second post, it says this is the title tag for my second post, right? And that's all there is to it. Now, you can do the same thing for meta tags. You know, if you know anything about SEO, most websites have meta description tags that the search engines use to index the website. You can do the same method with with those. Um, so I'll leave that to you if you want to do that. And uh, pretty cool. So we did a lot in this video. We styled our website. We got this nice bootstrap nav bar. We've got some basic navigation. And we added a field to our database model pushed it into the database, migrated it, made a migration. And uh, now we have uh, unique title tags at the top of our browser tabs for every page of our site. And uh, that's all there is to it and, and pretty cool. So that's all for this video. If you liked it, be sure to smash the like button below, subscribe to the channel, give me a thumbs up for the YouTube algorithm and check out codemy.com where you can use coupon code YouTube one to get $30 off membership. So it pay just $49 to access all my courses, over 40 courses, hundreds of videos, and the PDF versions of all my best-selling coding books. Join over 95,000 students learning to code just like you. My name is John Elder from codemy.com and we'll see you in the next video.